Good morning, Clear Branch kids. I hope you guys are having a great month as we learn all about peace. I know that I have really enjoyed learning about all the different ways that we can help make peace with those around us. And of course, I mean not the kind of peace like, peace out, dude. And I don't mean like, I just need a little peace and quiet like your mom might say. We're talking about true peace this month. And what true peace is, is when you show someone through your words and actions that you care more about them as a person than you do about winning an argument or getting what may seem like is the fair thing for you. But this week, we're gonna talk about something a little different about peace. We're gonna learn how we can be a part of making peace with those around us. So today's story comes from the Old Testament in the book of 1 Samuel. And in this story, we pick up where David, who has, God has chosen him to be the next king, but he's not the king yet. In fact, he's been serving time in Saul's court where he has become the best friend of Saul's son and he has become a very successful soldier and leader. But unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on who you are and who you might ask, David became extremely popular so popular with all the people that King Saul got a little worried that the people might overthrow him and try to take David as their king sooner. And also that the people liked him, liked David better than they actually liked King Saul, which seems childish, but there you go. He was worried. And so he got to where he treated David so poorly that it came to where he was actually threatening David's life. And so David picked up and ran. He took all of his men and he went out to the desert to hide from King Saul. Now, while they were out there, they had set up camp in a patch of land, or I'm sure it was more than a patch, but on an expanse of land that was right next to a very rich landowner. Now, this man's name was Nabal, and he was, we're told in the Bible, not a very nice guy, first of all, and probably had a little bit of an anger issue. But Nabal was not around very much, and as David and his men were out there doing what they needed to do and taking care of their flocks, they noticed that it seems like Nabal's shepherds and flocks were not very well guarded, and they were concerned, and so they tried to help out. So they would, whenever um, David's men went to take something to their shepherds, they would also take some to the shepherds that were there nearby. And they did such a good job of taking care of not only their own things, but also Nabal's shepherds and flocks, that at the end of that season, Nabal had had the most successful season he'd ever had. In fact, thanks to David's men's help, they lost not a single one of their flock. First time it had ever happened. So Nabal was ready to celebrate. So he decided that as part of the annual sheep shearing, they would also have a huge celebration. And David heard about this from some of Nabal's men. And so he thought, well, we've been out there helping out this whole time. We've done everything we could to help them, and it's really kind of because of us that they've been so successful. And so he sent a messenger to Nabal and asked if you, if Nabal would share some of the supplies and some of the food from the party with David's men. Well, I already told you Nabal was not known for being super nice, and he didn't want to share his things. And he said, what? You'd go back and tell him no. I don't even know this guy. And so the messenger did. And David was not happy. He was so angry and he got so swept up in it in the moment, he gathered all his men and he just marched his little army right on towards Nabal's home. Meanwhile, Nabal's wife, Abigail, is in the house doing what she's doing. I don't know if she was doing laundry or something, but she looks out the window and here's this huge army headed straight for her home and she has no idea why. So she asked one of the servants and they told her what all had been going on. And she knew that this was not going to end well, that she knew the kind of man her husband was. And she had heard about what a soldier that David was. And so she decided that she needed to step in and help make the situation better. So she sent the servants all around their land to gather up gifts for David and his men. And they loaded them all on donkeys. And she said, you get out there and start walking towards David as quickly as you can. And I'll be coming up behind. And so as David continues towards the home, suddenly he can see a group of people and donkeys coming towards him. And as they met, Abigail got there as quick as she could and she got off of her horse and she went straight to David and she bowed down and she said, 
please don't do this. I'm Abigail. I'm his Nabal's wife. I know the kind of man that he is. He is foolish. He doesn't make good choices, but God has sent me to keep you from making a bad, a bad choice or a bad mistake. We all know that you're going to be the next king. Stop and think about this and don't make this bad choice. Don't go into this job being the king of God's people with blood on your hands. That didn't have to happen. She said, I've brought you all these gifts to hopefully make up for the way that my husband's treated you. And I just want you to reconsider and to make the better choice. So David stopped and listened to what Abigail had to say. And then he said, you're right. I'm not going to do this. Thank you for stopping me. You're, I'm so thankful that God has sent you to keep me from making this choice. And guys, what Abigail did that day is she put herself into a situation that she was not truly a part of so that she could help two other people who were determined to make a bad choice of violence to make stop that choice. And we can do that too. Maybe it's sometimes not between two men who have armies backing them up. Maybe it's just between two friends that we have that where there's a misunderstanding that maybe we can help lovingly talk them through it so that they can see that they should be friends again. Maybe sometimes it's um, with our siblings or our friends at school, but we can also do just what Abigail did. We can make peace also. Have a great week, kids.